1985, there was a situation that broke out in Philadelphia called, um, well, the police called it Operation Move. The organization was Move, right? Um, this pro-black, um, Afrocentric organization, really, you know, a small group, just a small group of residents, but they, they made them a threat. And this is Ramona, Africa, describing how a confrontation with police led to the killing of six children of tear gas and then being shot at the police admit to shooting over 10,000 rounds of bullets at us in the first 90 minutes um there was a lull you know it was quiet for a little bit and then without any warning at all Two members of the Philadelphia Police Department's bomb squad got in a Pennsylvania State Police helicopter and flew over our home and dropped a satchel containing C4, a powerful military explosive that no municipal police department has. They had to get it from the federal government, from the FBI. And without any announcement or warning or anything, they dropped that bomb on the roof of our home. That was Ramona Africa, the sole adult survivor of the attack on MOVE 30 years ago today. Moved in to a victim. An armed standoff and firefight ensued, including the dropping of the explosives onto the house. Eleven people inside, including children, killed. The resulting fire destroying more than 60 other surrounding homes. Well, since then, the story has disappeared into the history books. None of those responsible at the time brought to justice. So, more than 30 years later, our correspondents have found new witnesses and spoken to those caught up in what happened. Well, Fanny Alar, Matcha Mabang and Ketaran Gorgestani revisit Philadelphia for France 24. At 5.30 this morning, warrants were to be served on the MOVE members. 20 minutes later, gunfire erupted. You know, everybody's running into each other. And just orders are being screamed. For the first five minutes, it was complete chaos. At this point, people are starting to panic. Uh, they're starting to run. A policeman taking a, an armed position. The um, artillery that they came out there with, that's the artillery of war but they came at us with that, and we had not committed any crime at all. The police shot so many bullets that they had to go up to another section of the city where the police gun range was to get more bullets. So we have new videotape of uh, the episode that apparently ended the uh, move situation tonight, the dropping of an incendiary device, 5.27 p.m., state police helicopter drops it. There is the explosion. As I headed toward my friend's house, he was coming up the street as I was walking down, and he said, they dropped the bomb on move. And my first reaction was disbelief. I said, no, they didn't. The whole block looked like a, uh, like we were in a war zone, you know? It was, it looked, it was terrible. When they went to attack our family May 13th, they made sure, sure they had that bomb, and they made sure that the house burnt to the ground because they did not want one person to, to come out alive. It was one of those days that you don't really like to relive. You don't wish, and you wish it never happens again. That's, that's how everybody felt. I think the reason the firemen didn't put the fire out, for the same reason the police didn't stop shooting, I think they, the police commissioner, wanted to kill everybody in there. The early 70s saw the rise of an organization known as MOVE, a revolutionary group led by John Africa, combining various ideologies, including anarchism, black liberation, environmentalism, and animal rights. Mike Africa Jr. is a child of MOVE. He was born 42 years ago behind these bars. Right now we're at House of Correction. This is the jail that I was born in. Well, my mother was pregnant at a time when the police raided our house and they arrested my parents and they put them in jail while she was pregnant. I came back to this jail maybe three, two or three years ago to see it. And 
It looked very familiar, even though I had never been here that I remembered. In August of 1978, MOVE engaged in a standoff after then-Mayor Frank Rizzo ordered the group to be removed from their communal home. Residents refused to leave, leading to a confrontation with the police. One police officer died, shot in the head. All nine members of the group were blamed for that death. Among them, Mike Jr.'s parents. How that cop died, people still don't know. Many people believe it was moved. Many people believe it was friendly fire. I don't know. But what I know is my parents spent 40 years in prison for something that they didn't do. Dubbed the Move 9, they were all convicted of third-degree murder and sentenced for up to 100 years in prison. All maintained their innocence. Mike Jr.'s parents were eventually freed in 2018 after a long legal battle. I've been working to get my parents out of prison since I was a teenager. At least 25, 27 years. Yeah, and it, you never give up, you know. As long as there's breath in their bodies, as long as there's breath in my body, then, you know, I gotta keep on trying to get them out of there. In the early 80s, MOVE relocated to a quiet, largely middle-class African-American residence on Osage Avenue. From there, they continued their fight for justice for the MOVE 9. Reporter Lynn Washington covered MOVE from the start. He remembers how the group protested day and night in the neighborhood. They felt if they put enough pressure on their neighbors, then the neighbors in turn will put pressure on city officials and then those city officials would effectuate the release of their nine incarcerated members from the 1978 incident. On top of the house, there was a um, public address system. So MOVE would harangue their neighbors, you know, any hours of the day. I mean, uh, the, um, Christmas in 1984, they did a harangue for 24 hours straight. We are Because MOVE was doing this, there was um, ancillary disruptions in that there were a lot of news media always around. There was a heavy police presence always around. There were onlookers. So it was just chaos uh, on this particular block. For months, neighbors repeatedly complained to the city about the group's behavior to no avail. If our government agencies um, who are paid by our tax dollars are unable to guarantee and enforce those rights for us, then we as citizens also have the right to do that ourselves. On May 13, 1985, Wilson Good, Philadelphia's first African-American mayor, gave the order to deploy 500 officers to evict MOVE members. 13 people were in the communal home on that fateful day, including six children. The standoff lasted for hours before the police finally dropped a bomb on the house. 